Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. Welcome to my channel Biochemistry Club and this is the second lecture of glycolysis and here we will discuss the feeder's pathway for glycolysis. So let's start today's lecture. Uh, previously, we have discussed that when glucose entered inside the cell, there is the first major pathway that is glycolysis happening inside the cytosol. And through this pathway, the glucose is finally converted into the two molecules of pyruvates. But now, we will also consider another point that in addition to glucose, there are variety of other monosaccharides which are the part of our diet. For example, if we consume milk, the predominant sugar in milk is lactose which is made up of glucose and galactose. So when enzyme lactose Lactase, it will act upon this disaccharide and it will break the beta 1 4 glycosidic bond between the galactose and glucose. These two sugars will be free. And now, after being absorbed by the blood, these sugars will enter to the target cell. These sugars will be entered to the targeted cell where glucose will be entered into the process of glycolysis. But what will happen to the galactose? How this sugar will be metabolized inside the body? How this galactose will contribute in the energy production pathway? Similarly, if we consume table sugar or the sucrose which is made up of glucose and fructose, Again, the enzyme sucrase will break the bond between these two sugars. Glucose, again, being absorbed by the cell, will enter into the process of glycolysis. But what will happen to the fructose? So, in this lecture, we will see that the monosaccharides, other than glucose, how these sugars manage to enter inside the process of glycolysis. So, these pathways, the pathways through which these sugars, other than glucose, entered into the process of glycolysis is called feeder's pathway. So, here is a sketch where you can see that all other sugars other than glucose, they manage to convert themselves into the one of the intermediates of glycolysis. And then these sugars can also contribute in the energy production pathways. For example, you can see here the mannose. This mannose sugar, by the action of certain enzymes, is converted into the fructose 6-phosphate, which will then enter into the process of glycolysis, be converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, G3P, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and further steps will be the common as glucose. Similarly, the fructose, by the action of certain enzyme, hexokinase or fructokinase, it will also be converted into the fructose 6-phosphate or into the three carbon sugars, glyceraldehyde, three phosphate, or dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So this way, this fructose will also contribute to the energy production pathway. Another sugar is galactose. Another hexose is galactose, which again, by the action of certain enzymes, will be converted into glucose 1-phosphate, which will be then converted into glucose 6-phosphate, and this glucose 6-phosphate will then enter into the process of glycolysis. So the point I want to raise here is sugars other than glucose, for example, fructose, mannose, and galactose, as you have seen in this diagram, these sugars, they manage to convert themselves to any of the intermediate of glycolysis. And once this sugar has been converted into the glycolytic intermediate, other pathway will be seen. So this is the feeder's pathway by which the sugars other than glucose are converted to the glycolytic intermediates. So starting from the first sugar, that is fructose. Suppose we have consumed sucrose and the hydrolytic product of this disaccharide is glucose and fructose. We have discussed what happened to the glucose, but in case of fructose, how this fructose will be entered into the process of glycolysis, there are two entry points. 
One is by the action of enzyme hexokinase. And if hexokinase acts on fructose, the single enzymatic reaction is sufficient to fuel this fructose to glycolysis. How? The hexokinase, just like the glucose, it will phosphorylate the carbon number 6 of fructose and will convert it into the fructose 6-phosphate, which we know is an intermediate of glycolysis and it will enter into the glycolytic pathway. So here, by the action of a single enzyme, the fructose has managed to enter into the glycolytic pathway. But in certain cells, the uh, another enzyme, a specific enzyme for the fructose is present, that is fructokinase. And this fructokinase is different from hexokinase. In a sense, it is responsible for the phosphorylation of carbon number one of fructose. So once the fructose will be acted upon by fructokinase enzyme, the mechanism of action will be same, but the position of phosphorylation will be different. So by the action of this enzyme, fructose will be converted into the fructose 1-phosphate. But we all know fructose 1-phosphate is not an intermediate of glycolysis. So definitely it will not enter into the glycolysis. It, it still needs further modifications. So... Now, another enzyme will act upon this fructose 1-phosphate and the name of this enzyme is aldolase. And here you can see <clears throat> the chemical reaction of this aldolase is very much similar to the aldolase which we have discussed in our lecture 1 of glycolysis where this enzyme was responsible for the cleavage of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. In this structure, the fructose does not have a phosphate group at carbon number 6, but the cleavage will take place from the same position, from carbon number 3 to 4, and again, two, three carbon compounds will be produced. I have discussed in my previous lecture that why the bond between carbon number 3 and 4 is most likely to break other, as compared to the other bonds. So, this aldolase enzyme, fructose 1-phosphate aldolase enzyme, will cleave the carbon-carbon bond between carbon-3 and carbon-4. And what we will get, we will get the two products, one of which dihydroxyacetone phosphate is phosphorylated because of the presence of phosphate group at carbon number 1. But the second product, which is derived from carbon-4, 5, and 6, will be non-phosphorylated. So one of the cleavage product is dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which is an intermediate of glycolysis. So it can easily enter into the process of glycolysis. But the second product, glyceraldehyde, is still not ready to enter inside the process of glycolysis because it is not phosphorylated. So another enzyme, glyceraldehyde kinase, will act on it and it will phosphorylate the glyceraldehyde, which is a three-carbon uh, aldehyde sugar, aldotriose, and it will phosphorylate this aldotriose to carbon number 3, and we will get glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which is again an intermediate of glycolysis. So in this second route, you can see the fructose will seek the help from three different enzymes to enter into the process of glycolysis. The first one is fructokinase, the second one is fructose 1-phosphate aldolase, and third will be glyceraldehyde kinase. So by the action of these three enzymes, one molecule of fructose will be entered into the glycolysis. As you can see here, fructokinase, fructose 1-phosphate aldolase, it will break the 6-carbon structure into the two 3-carbon compounds, and then this dihydroxyacetone phosphate will enter into the process of glycolysis where an enzyme of glycolysis triose phosphate isomerase will convert this sugar to its isomeric form G3P. And here the glyceraldehyde will first be acted upon by enzyme triose kinase or glyceraldehyde kinase and then it will be entered into the process of glycolysis. Okay, so let's move toward another example. Suppose we have consumed a sugar. Uh, we have consumed. <clears throat> so suppose we have consumed the lactose from the milk. 
and this lactose is actually the source of two sugars galactose and glucose out of which glucose will enter into the process of glycolysis how i have discussed in detail earlier but now the question is how this galactose will manage to enter into the process of glycolysis how this galactose will enter into this pathway so for this purpose there are specific enzymes which are going to help the galactose to enter into the process of glycolysis the very first enzyme is galactokinase and this enzyme is very much similar to the fructokinase it means it is going to phosphorylate the carbon number 1 of galactose and after the action of this enzyme galactose will be converted into the galactose 1 phosphate bearing a phosphate group at carbon number 1 so now there is a galactose 1 phosphate the second enzyme is udp glucose to galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase and through the name of this enzyme we can understand what type of chemical reaction it is going to catalyze basically this is a transferase enzyme and which which group this enzyme is going to transfer this group is going to transfer uridyl group from udp glucose to galactose 1 phosphate it means galactose 1 phosphate will be accepted and udp glucose will be donor and this udp group will be transferred from glucose to galactose so there is actually an exchange udp glucose will transfer its udp gr group to the galactose and galactose 1 phosphate will transfer its phosphate group to the glucose now why is this uh, udp or the nucleotide transfer is being taking place here in order to explain it i will give an example inside the cell there are some reserves which are marked by the certain labels for example suppose uh, there is a glucose or the sugar inside a cell and this sugar is labeled by a phosphate group so by the attachment of phosphate to this glucose the cell is marking that this glucose is specific or this glucose will predominantly will be used for energy production this glucose will be used for pentose phosphate pathway this glucose will be used for some other pathways but there is an other amount of glucose inside the cell which is marked by the attachment of nucleotides for example here suppose a glucose to which udp is attached here is glucose to which adp is attached here is galactose to which udp is attached so those sugars on which nucleotides are attached these sugars are specifically used for anabolic reactions for example for starch for glycogen production and for some other anabolic pathways so cell has actually its separate reserve reserves for the glucose glucose which is going to be used for catabolism and glucose which is specific for anabolism so now what will happen one molecule of udp glucose from this pool from this reserve will be moved out udp glucose and in cytosol there is galactose one phosphate which is produced by the action of enzyme galactokinase suppose this is a complete cell where these processes are being taking place so one udp glucose will come and it will exchange its udp group with the galactose so after the mutual exchange with the help of this enzyme udp group will be transferred to the galactose and it will be converted into the udp galactose and phosphate group will be converted to the glucose and glucose will be converted into the glucose 1 phosphate so what has happened 
the glucose from this store from this reserve has moved out and it has donated its udb group to the galactose and now this galactose will move to this pool and what this glucose will do it will enter to this pool and it will contribute to the energy production pathways through glycolysis after the action of an enzyme mutase which will definitely shift its its phosphate group from carbon number 1 to 6 so the next or the final enzyme is phosphohexose mutase which will convert this molecule this glucose 1 phosphate to the glucose 6 phosphate which will then enter into the process of glycolysis. So by this means, the galactose, uh, it, it has actually, the galactose has actually attracted one of the glucose molecule towards energy production and itself it has moved toward the anabolic poles. So through this summary, you can see how these sugars can enter into the process of glycolysis or you can see the this is one of the major pathway in which all of the monosaccharides they are uh, adding they are fueling to the pathway so this is called as the feeders pathway for glycolysis i hope this lecture is clear to you if you have any questions you can ask in comment section thank you